Miss a one bag of gold medal pan me up. Red stripe for one champion boy go. Pan a poor them a singing and ten drum. Red stripe, watcha watcha watcha. Man shall I make a forward boy. Red stripe Premier League champion boy score. Every goal when I run from boy. Red stripe Premier League champion boy. The Red Stripe Premier League for champions only. Tony Spalling Sports Complex and the fans here getting ready for defending champions Arnett Garns against Tumbleland. The teams are getting ready to come out onto the field of play led by the ball boys and uh, the match officials, including the man with the whistle tonight, Daniel Parchment. There he is in the middle, fresh out of standing in the Manning Cup final on Friday between Jamaica College and St. Andrew Technical. Arnett Gardens and Humberland coming up in a few minutes from now. These two teams have met 13 times in the past four seasons. This one included six Arnett Gardens victories, five Humberland victories, and there have been two drawn results. A match of immense proportions here. Arnett Gardens, because of their political affi affiliation, not usually feeling too much affinity for teams who come to the Tony Spalling Sports Complex dressed in green. Yes, indeed, and uh, that's a very important point to make, and we can uh, say with certainty uh, both of these teams aligned each to the major political parties in Jamaica. Arnett Gardens, traditionally, uh, the, the, the community is, has been a strong supporter of the People's National Party over the years. Humberland, based on location in Effortville in Clarendon, uh, aligned to the Jamaica Labour Party. Politics usually doesn't play out on the football field, but that is always the undercurrent uh, to social events, and football is one in the country. And yeah, we expect some of that to maybe uh, find its way into the challenges in the match this evening. Kevin Reed, captain of the Humberland team, and the Greeting party, Even Michelle Cunningham, assistant brand manager at Red Stripe, and Michael Ricken, president of the Jamaica Football Federation. And uh, the Humberland team in green. They're on a three-game unbeaten run, which is their longest unbeaten run so far this season as they try to steady themselves after a pretty tame start to the 2017-2018 campaign. So should point out out of the six Arnett Garns victories that they have had over Humberland in their last 13 meetings. Three of those victories have come in playoff games. So head-to-head -head regular season in recent years, Humberland have been better than Arnett Garns. But when it comes to the matches that count and the playoff matches, no wins for Humberland against Arnett. There's their big 34-year-old captain, O'Neill Thompson, leading the introductions to his Arnett setup. One of the points to make, though, is that Humberland have the, the, the players have the character. They don't wilt when they come into this environment. Many players do, but not the Humberland guys, because these guys are tough, made of stern stuff. They relish the cauldron of the Tony Spalling Sports Complex. Yes, they certainly do. The national anthem coming up moments before kickoff. intensity coming from the body language of these two teams here on it Garns buoyed by a very very impressive start to the season uncharacteristically so George because usually Arnett starts pretty moderate for the season and build up as they go on but they've been hot from day one yeah they have to be hot from day one guess what some youngsters have come in Lance and they have taken the opportunity to start in this team usually uh, the experienced players come back and bolster the Arnett Garns lineup but the youngsters that have come in 
have hit the ground running. That accounts for their very, very strong start to this season, to the extent that some of the, old, the Oldsters can't find a way back into the team. Well, that's more sure. So, the two captains now, Kevon Reed from Humberland and uh, Bonnie Thompson from Arnett Gardens. The coin toss from referee Daniel Parchment, his assistant Nicholas Anderson and Jermaine Yee Sing. The fourth official is Oshane Nation, who stood in the, the Costa Cup final on Saturday between Brasis and the Clarendon Collins. So, top FIFA officials on hand tonight for this Red Stripe Football Monday's fixture. <laughs> Arnett Garns with seven victories in their 12 matches so far. Their regular goalkeeper, Damien Hart, O'Neill Thompson, their captain, Johnson Anderson Martin, Reed Harris Hyde, Deacon Edwards Morgan. That's the starting lineup for Arnett. Yeah, when I look at this squad, I'm so impressed because there's so much quality on the bench. So, Vishnul Harris in that hole. Fabian Reed will play central of the three strikers. Marvin Morgan and Damari Deacon will flank Fabian Reed, and then Vishnul Harris will be tasked with trying to find them. Watch number two, O'Neill Anderson. He's a ball of energy and a force of nature on the right side of the Arnett attack usually plays from the defensive positions but overlaps into an attack, you know, in an attacking position often as the match grows old. Humberland in yeah. green, they are 10th in the standings at the moment with 13 points. Plunkett, Jovel Plunkett who kept for Marbley Huenden last year is in goal. Reed, their captain in defence. Howell Duckworth, Gregory Lewis, Vansy. Romaria Campbell, Parkins, Hilton, former Mo Bay player, Wolf and Dennis. Yeah, they have tremendous pace up front. Corey Hilton, a roadrunner. Ricardo Dennis beside him, also a roadrunner. And Romaria Campbell, the beating heart of the midfield. The man who will be looking to knit together the work done by the defensive midfielders. And of course, try to bring the forwards onto the same patch of fabric to get everything in order for the Humberland team. There's Meron Gordon, the new coach. This is his second outing as coach of Humberland, replacing uh, Lemreth High, who stepped away from the the job after a poor start for Humberland this season. Regular season champions last year, Humberland. And there's Jerome Wade, the man in charge of a successful Arnett Garns unit. And the fans here in uh, Arnett Garns very, very satisfied with the work of this man who is also assistant coach to Theodore Whitmore at the national level at the moment. Yeah, deserves his chance. Jerome Wade has done, has served a very long apprenticeship, a successful apprenticeship. He is uh, very well credentialed at the local football level, at the local level. Let's see how he cuts it as the assistant to the national coach. Damien Parchment, whistle, ready and off for Red Stripe Football Mondays tonight. Arnett Garns in red and black, Humberland in green. Arnett just stroking the ball at the back. Hyde goes for a long ball downfield. Arnett are getting away from here. Morgan cuts the ball back. A little bit too much there. Arnett though still trying to keep the pressure on. Arnett in possession, threatening now. into the defensive zone early. Dennis, former Glenmuir man, in possession now for Humberland. Oh, he gives the ball away. Arnett losing it just as quickly. Clear it down, hurt. That's Deacon. It looks as if he'll be okay now, finally getting back to his feet. Howell, two-time Manning Cup winner with Excelsior in the mid-2004-2005. Mid, uh, Both teams currently don't like the ball because they keep giving it away. Howell. Campbell. Humberland starting things over from the back. Reed. Fancy. Doesn't like his inside passing option, so he decides to go out wide to Powell. Great ball in the middle. Bit Very of a good stumble there from Parkins. Very good build up from Humberland. They look to, they're trying to force the game to settle for them. 
and uh, Romario Campbell, crucial uh, to all that. Most of their attacking play, when they come centrally, will come through uh, the man wearing 26 in the green shirt. Wait, looking studious in the early moments of this game here. Maren Gordon had Premier League coaching experience previously with Sporting Central. Who have been in top flight football now for three or four years. But has done tremendously well with Lennon in schoolboy football. Ben Francis Cup winners last year. Taking a young team from almost nothing to title success from Clarendon. Howell, Luton, that park, park is, oh, they're giving the ball away, and now Morgan gets away here for Arnett, not with support on the front end, now the support coming from Reed. Morgan does well. Reed is getting the ball away now for Humble Line in the end, but Arnett looking really threatening there. Is Dennis breaking free here for Humberland sucks the ball through, but oh, that was too far in front there for Corey Hilton to chase. Poor pass from Ricardo Dennis because essentially O'Neill Bigger Thompson was appealing for offside. The flag never came, and Dennis was allowed to run through freely. Campbell knocked up by Harris from behind. Humberland with comfort in the midfield. Oh, now they've given the ball away. That's Hilton giving the ball away. Now Harris breaks into the box for Arnett. But Plunkett is alert in goal for Humberland. Poor first touch from Vishnu Harris. Wanted to take that in his stride. May have caught his shin. Well, the toe of the boot. Yeah, he needed to keep that one a lot closer to him and giving himself a better chance to get a goal scoring opportunity. High pressing at the moment and forcing Humbland back into their defensive zone. Here is a high press once again. I tell you what, I was saying that moments ago that Humbland trying to force themselves to settle. It's a very nervous start for the team in green, giving the ball away with regularity in the back. Edwards goes for goal from distance. Plunkett doesn't handle it well. Morgan with a strike, the deflection, and then Vancey gets it away. Oh, that was a fierce strike from Edwards. Plunkett looked to be in a spot of bother there. He didn't know if he wanted to catch it or leave it alone. Wasn't quite sure where it was going. That ball hit him. Oh, my God. What a classic play from the big central defender. The 34-year-old Thompson. <laughs> in these parts, you call it a pile. In South America, they call it a sombrero. What a comfort and on the ball from Thompson. Harris loses his temper, shoves Hilton, and referee Parchment now looks like a boxing referee. Always happens between these teams, that No quarter asked, none given. And we've seen various flashpoints between the teams over the years. This is Vishnu Harris. Oh, that's Corey Hilton trying to win the ball and catching the shin of Vishnul Harris. This is Edwards' shot. The goalkeeper, I can't even explain his actions there. Luckily, he had his body behind it. Yeah, that could have beaten him in the end. Fancy was the man who got the ball away. A yellow card comes out, I think, for Hilton. Yes, it is. Harris is in discomfort from the Hilton challenge. Looked rather reckless, although his body language is suggest suggesting that the referee is hard on him. No, it was overly aggressive. The ball was bouncing around and he came and he swung his leg with purpose. Good call by the referee Parchment. Yeah, Hilton played a couple of years for Mobe United. Actually featured in the first goal of the final two seasons ago when they defeated Portmore at the Catherine Hall Sports Complex for the title. Great ball by Pansy. Gets Dennis going. Dennis is under some pressure. Oh, 
almost squeezing through there, Gregory Lewis, but in the end, Arnett Garn's defenders are strong with the challenge. And look at that defending. The right back is defending with the winger coming back to help him. That's good for Arnett Gardens, creating the double team, which the humble land man couldn't conquer. Yeah. Hyatt with this kick himself. Way out of his 18 yard area. It's a lot of distance on the kick. Kurt Duckworth getting the header up there for Humbleland, not allowing Arnett too much comfort on the front end. Hyde. Martin challenged up here by Vansy. Throw one by Humbleland. So. Clear signs early in this fixture, George, that Humbleland are intent on tacking sharply and taking some of the comfort from this home fixture for Arnett. Yeah, they're they're putting a lot of meat into the tackles. Harris goes for goal. Tame Plumley has an easy job. They want to impose themselves on the game early is a phrase we're looking for, Lance. Hyatt has a bit of difficulty but does well with a headed pass. Martin inside to his captain, Thompson. Thompson gives the ball away. Wait to be very, very happy with what Arnett has delivered for him so far this season. Their 12-game unbeaten streak is by far the best in the league at the moment. The closest team to that kind of streak is Portmore, who are on six. Arnett, twice that undefeated. Problem is, you don't win trophies for going unbeaten at this stage of the season. You don't win trophies for doing anything in the regular season. Cumberland know that very well. They finished top of the pile after 33 games last year and ended up the season with nothing. That's right. A tremendous season, Cumberland. Well, three seasons in a row, they have gotten to the semi finals, but haven't been able to even get to a final. So their regular season, Cumberland, in recent years has typically been good enough to get to the playoffs but then when they get to the playoffs they don't deliver Morgan Harris Morgan knocked over from behind by Vanzi Wolf commits the foul there on Harris one of the most fouled players for Arnett Garns for sure Harris trying to get to the ball, but Raffi Wolf aggressive with a shot from behind knocks over Harris. Fancy with the header out. Kenny Hyde doesn't get by Parkins, whose long kick downfield finds Ricardo Dennis. Dennis has Hilton in support. Slides the ball through, great pass here. Brilliant clearance with a boot from Hyde. What a pass from Ricardo Dennis. He's been the brightest attacker in green so far this evening. A tremendous pass. Bypass three defenders. Look at him. Martin goes on the side. Look at this pass. Cuts out those two men retreating. And the goalkeeper playing super keeper. That's Hugo Loris for you. Damien Hyatt. And he gets there and clears up the mess. Enterprising play there from Ricardo Dennis. Only 20 years old. Former Glenbure player. Also played with Portmore United. But one of the most exciting players in local football, Ricardo Dennis, on his best day. Hugh Howell. Gregory Lewis. Fancy. Campbell to his captain, Reed. Well, poor pass that by Fancy. Reed scrambling to prevent a throw. Hilton being challenged from behind. So Arnett strong in defense early and a bit of a limp there from Marvin Morgan over on the right. 
Hi, with a big clearance downfield. Foul committed by Fancy. Doesn't want to allow Edwards too much comfort on the ball. Campbell, Hilton, Fancy. Martin intercepts well for on it. Reed's first touch is good enough. Well, the pass much too far for therefore any of his attackers to get onto. Complaining that Deacon to his left though wasn't giving him the option he wanted ideally. But so far, Humberland, they've tried from the midfield to hit the diagonals to Ricardo Dennis, who's faster than the Arnett Guards defenders, well, at least Bigger Thompson. And they're trying to play on that weakness, that perceived lack of speed in the Arnett back three. Dennis has had some joy so far, Lance. Arnett will have to be sharp to keep taps on him. Pretty cool conditions here at the Tony Spalling Sports Complex and some warming up the stomach there with a cup of soup. The third foul by Van Zilans, and I'm sure Dalian Parchment, yes, is pointing to him to calm down because he pointed, I've seen you do this and that there before. However, the next foul from the Humberland number 12 will see him booked. Lovely turn from Harris to leave him. Yeah, Harris, the, the kind of player that you want to nullify because if you give this man room, he surely has the quality to hurt you. 24 year old former Charlie Smith player. Remember how he was through the Humberland defense to score in the semi final last season? Yes, he did. Eliminated them. Neil Anderson behind the ball along with Thompson. Anderson strike. It's much too high. Very, very strong, energetic young player. O'Neill Anderson, former. Outstanding player in Manning Cup football for Camperdown. Tremendous find for Arnett Gardens. I've seen him about four times this season. Hasn't played a bad half of football, let alone a game. Very, very good. Has slotted in seamlessly into the Arnett Gardens setup on Neil Anderson. Yeah. Just under 20 years old and looks to have a, a bright future ahead of him. This kind of team very, very strong in depth. We getting close to the ball here. Plunkett gets there first, though. Two players down hurt. Reed recovers well enough, but the Humberland player still in pain. I think that could be Duckworth. Kurt Duckworth. Collision may have been with his goalkeeper as well. Yeah, he definitely collided, but was shoved towards the goalkeeper by Reed, not maliciously, they were, he was jockeying for position. Duckworth, and I'm not going to say he's injury prone, but every time I've seen Kirk Duckworth lands, he always has to leave the field for treatment for some blow or the other. A good defender, sometimes I see him on the humble land bench and I'm wondering why. Every time he comes, he plays well, defends manfully and took a shot to the side of the face from his own goalkeeper. Under pressure there because he saw Reed charging in, and Reed has been Arnett's top goal scorer so far this season with six goals. Really on fire on the goal scoring front. Front had eight goals overall last year when he was considered Arnett's player of the season. And after a third of the season, he has already moved within two of his last season tally. Yeah, perhaps if he started the season last year playing as striker, he'd have way more than his final tally. The only man not working out so far in the Arnett attack lands is Deacon on this left-hand side of the attack. They haven't been able to find him just yet. And uh, there are several persons in the stands coaching the man wearing 24, telling him where to run and what to do to get the ball. It's not quite working out for him yet. Yeah, when you think that Arnett has players on the bench of the likes of Newton Sterling, who was their second leading highest scorer last year fourth highest score of the season before. And there are options coming from the bench for Arnett. Howell back to his captain, Reed. Looking to find 
Dennis here. Martin. There's the hitter that partially averts the danger. Oh, this far to Hilton here. Dennis. Oh, that's a brilliant block. What a save there from O'Neill Bigger Thompson. I think that ball was heading goalwards. It was. Whistle, free kick to Arnett Garden, says Rafi Wolf. He's being penalized here, and Arnett are getting the benefit of the free kick taken very quickly. Anderson making room. Delightful ball through, but Howell is there for Humberland. Best moment of the match just then we saw for Humberland. Anderson has gone down the right side. Morgan. Morgan still. Great ball inside. Deacon with a right footed effort. He gets an affection on the corner. Well, if he had only done that, can he hide behind him at space to pick a spot and effect a shot on target? This is Deacon. Maybe he didn't get a call from Highland, so he, he had to gather. But this is the ball. Through to Dennis. Gets shooting room, but the big frame of O'Neill Thompson slides across and prevents his keeper from having to make a save. That was a very pivotal sliding challenge from O'Neill Thompson. That blocked the effort from Dennis. Plunkett in goal for Humberland. Went right through to the near post and goalkeeper Plunkett clutching onto it. There was an element of danger there for Humberland as they defended. Martin under pressure. That ball across the line. Throw to Humberland. I thought he just get to him that the assistance is closer to the play. Too sure if this was the intended play from this corner, but you know what? It almost squeezed through there as Rafi Wolf tried to make the clearance and he deflected the ball toward his own goal. Luckily for him, Plunkett, his goalkeeper, was right there on the near post to take it. Parkins putting some pressure here on Anderson and wins the ball. Dennis is free. Still Dennis. Martin challenges Dennis. Dennis with a shot, it's blocked again. Twice in the past three minutes, Dennis has had shots blocked. Vanzi. Hilton. Goes for goal! Brilliant save by Hart. Dennis with a rebound. Great defensive work now with Arnett Garns coming back. Through Deacon it was. Good skill there by Duckworth who goes for goal from distance. Wow. Humbland have found their best stride, Lance. They have. And Ricardo Dennis is the man who's really sparked them into action. This is Hilton. His shot palmed away by Hyatt. And then Duckworth having a pop from long range. Why not? But Ricardo Dennis, Arnett Garden's defenders having trouble picking him up. Buzzing with energy. Full of pace and menace, Ricardo Dennis. And Jamar Martin. O'Neill Thompson, Jabir Johnson having their hands full. Yeah, that's for sure. Campbell. This is Lewis trying to go forward down the right side here. Tripped by Deacon. And now Hyatt has the ball for Arnett. Deacon. Reed. Duckworth puts pressure on. Humbland with 50% ball possession at the moment and doing well. Rafael Wolf wins a free kick shot from behind by Morgan. Cleverly running into the way of Morgan. That's how he was tripped. Campbell. Two man challenge for Arnett winning the ball, and now Vishnu Harris has it. The speedy Morgan fails to get to the ball. Took a bubble. Morgan trying to energize his humble and team here with this away fixture. Only had three wins so far this season, Humberland. But you know what? Two of those three wins have come on the road. So Humberland showing that they aren't afraid of home opposition when they travel. Yeah, that's because they, their bad start to the season, Lance, has ensured that there's a lot of bile and negativity coming from their own supporters at Effortville. So they don't mind playing on the road. Howell. Dennis fights hard for the ball. Doesn't win it. Edwards for on it. 
Reed puts a chase onto it. Duckworth full of running on the chase. Whistle. Offside. Offside. Flag is up. Speak, speaking of offside lands, three times now Arnett Gardens' defenders. Yeah. Three times now Arnett Gardens' defenders have tried to play the offside flag against the crowd today. You know what has happened on each occasion? The flag has stayed down. They have to be very careful. One of these, one of these times he's gonna run through free on goalkeeper Hyatt. And it will be mano a mano in that situation. Yeah, that's for sure. Arnett have won seven of their 12 games so far this season. But you know what? Humbland are not listed on their victims list. In That's their first home meeting, tackle. there was a 1-1 one -one draw between them. That's an awful tackle. Romario Campbell saying he went for the ball, but you could hear the impact from our commentary point as he went in hard on Marvin Morgan. And Morgan suffering here. Wow. He went for the ball, but that certainly had some recklessness about it because Tuts were charging into the shin area of Warga. And uh, I don't think it, what transpired there, Campbell can be disappointed about that goal against him. It was a bad tackle and then an aggressive follow through because he even left the ground and went through on the other leg. Dangerous, dangerous tackle. Wait, this Arnett Gardens team program here for back to back time is not something that is achieved too often in domestic football. Santos did it in the 1970s, Reno did it 91 92, Arnett did it 01 02. So only three teams have repeated in the history of Premier League football in Jamaica. And Arnett are having another go at that. Another yellow card for Mario Campbell, the second man into the book for Humberland after Corey Hilton. There's a man down on the edge of the Humberland 18 yard box being attended to now by, and it's Duckworth who took that blow to the side of the head in that tussle with Fabian Reed and his goalkeeper. May have just given referee Daniel Parchment the sign that he's okay to continue. We resume. Hide. Searching ball forward. Plunkett judges it, judges it well. Plunkett, former Kingston technical schoolboy. As I said, played with Marvel Hewen then as their goalkeeper last year. He's also a re ex Rivoli player as well. the 26th minute and the Arnett fans yet to have anything significant to shout about second most prolific scoring team in the Premier League so far this season with 23 goals only Portmore with 24 have scored more and then Portmore have played a game more as well Howell for Humberland Lewis Hyde, great skill by Hyde. Reed, oh, the beautiful one touch pass there. And Hyde sets the ball back here but invites the challenge from Vanzi. And now Howell gets there with a clearance. Vanzi, Campbell. Edwards wrestled off the ball. Wrestling Lewis off the ball and now Arnett from the back with Anderson. Comfortable to Martin. Good exchange of passes there between Morgan and Anderson. Parkins with the foul. Free kick to Arnett. But I tell you what, the Humberland defenders, midfielders, really tackling hard taking no prisoners and Hugh Howell hasn't even gotten in on the acted lads yeah he's usually their hard man smallest man on the field tracking down only Anderson and bringing him down Ramoy Parkins yeah lucky to escape a booking all right there's Parkins 
24 year old former Lennon player, would have been coached by Meron Gordon at the schoolboy level, and now finds him in charge again. Traffic with the easy take. Campbell looking to get Dennis. Dennis has extreme pace. Oh, Hyatt is coming off his goal area. Oh, he committed himself there. Luckily for him, Dennis wasn't able to latch onto the ball. In the meantime, Dennis is hurt. And he looks to be in some amount of pain. But that was a risky decision there by Hyatt because there was a defender in attendance as well. Poor play by the goalkeeper, but more worryingly for Ricardo Dennis. That looks to be a hamstring injury, Lance. Gets around the keeper. And uh, yeah, the twang, based on where he's holding on the leg, looks as if that's it for Ricardo Dennis. Yes. That's a telltale sign. Wow. The hamstring goes. So disappointing for him. Looked the brightest individual attacker on the pitch for either team in the first 28 minutes of this game. And his night has ended early. Yeah, if that is an, a, a hamstring issue, which we strongly suspect, George, we're 98% certain that his night is over. What was Damien Hyatt thinking though? He had a defender covering who was favored to get to the ball before Dennis. And he ran outside of his 18 yard box. And didn't get there. So huge disappointment now for Humble Land, their most potent attacking player appears to be exiting the game. Well, the, the, the players have just signaled to the bench, no, to hold off on the change. It seemed to be a hamstring based on how he hobbled. Well, let's see. There was a huge grimace on his face as well, suggesting he's in tremendous discomfort. Humberland down to 10 men at the moment. Arnett in control with Anderson. Morgan challenged by Wolf. Fans suspecting there that was a back pass to the goalkeeper. Not sure it was though. It was a sliding challenge by Vance to defend. Turned out that the ball left his boot and went to the goalie. Guess what? Remind me not to pronounce hamstring injuries again. Dennis is ready to come back onto the parklands. Well, we'll watch him closely because if it's if it's if it's even a tweak of the hamstring, there is immense risk in him continuing he just took some painkillers <laughs> well we'll see what happens now Dennis anxious to get back Lewis Thompson with a clearance outfield Reed too much weight on the pass from Reed aiming for Morgan Arnett Barnes would have loved to see the back of Dennis. Not just yet. So we're past the half hour mark. No goals hit between these two teams. Twice in the past three seasons, Arnett have eliminated Humbland in the semi final playoff stage of the Red Stripe Premier League. Fancy with a free kick for Humberland. Fancy is a curious player, Lance. He's a player who has so much ability, and I'm, I'm always frustrated when I watch him because I think he can do so much more than he actually does. Hat with the easy take. Has this manner of almost seeming to be playing within himself? Harris too much weight on the pass there, looking for Morgan. So Harris's usual clinical passing skills so far a little off tonight yeah and uh, they, they, they aren't attack in the past five or seven minutes to get a little tattered the pass is not sticking apart from a couple of neat flicks between Kenny Hyde and Fabian Reed pretty much everything else has gone astray so the look of them both these two teams have a lot of scoring individuals in their roster Arnett, 13 different scorers so far this season from the 12 matches they've played. 
Impressive. And even Humberland, who have not been that prolific in scoring, have already had eight different scores this season. Oh, there goes Dennis, who shows no ill effects from the injury he just suffered. That's not a foul, Damian Parchment, but he's closer to the action. I'll give him that, but Martin got the ball there for me. And maybe on the follow-through, got Dennis and by any application of the rules that's not a foul look at the ball yes he took the ball but oh yeah oh, I yeah. see the follow the follow through yeah the late challenge yeah because he yeah, took the, the ball with the initial tackle yeah yeah so Dennis is knocked over but has won a free kick for Humberland and Romario Campbell from a Waterhouse standout prepares to launch this one inside left footed wants to ensure that his defenders are alert Campbell looking focused goes for the far post oh the ball cleared off the six yard line and there's an Arnett player down whistle from referee Parchment awards a free kick to the defending Arnett team nice free kick dangerous here right at the back post lovely flight on it and Yuho will could must his way in trying to win the second ball Yuho will kick to Neil Anderson yeah that was a pretty hefty kick from Howell big strong aggressive defender for Howell and Harris and Howell the two H's opposing each other with some heated verbal exchanges The goalkeeper grabbed the ball out of the 18 yard area just now. The referee was close enough to the action and the assistant referee as well, and neither made the call. Lewis for Humberland. Hyde putting the chase on. Oh, and Oni Thompson checks Lewis and takes the yellow card. I tell you what, that's a good yellow card to take because Lewis was away, danced away from Kenny Hyde, determined run from Lewis and it took the captain to come over and sort the situation out and now he turns and berates Kenny Hyde for letting Lewis get away from him and a big strong shoulder into the chest of Lewis halted his progress down the right hand side <laughs> O'Neill Bigger Thompson takes a yellow card for the team Oh, he's also schooling Damar Deacon as well. Wonder what's going through Jerome Wayne's mind right now. Lecture continues. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a pretty hefty blow there on Gregory Lewis. And Baron Gordon would be satisfied at the moment as his second assignment in charge of Humberland that they have up to this point 10 minutes before halftime held the championship leaders and defending champions scoreless it's Patrick Roberts they are the chairman that attack by Humberland just no lands was impressive Peter Prendergast on the right of your picture the former FIFA referee man who stood at the 2002 World Cup representing Jamaica I'll tell you more after this threatening free kick here for Humberland Romario Campbell has scored from this position before Hyatt has to be watchful <laughs> referee holds the game because Blunkett the goalkeeper for Humberland is apparently ailing Wondering how he picked up that injury. It was his tremendous throw that started that attack from which Gregory Lewis drew the free kick. We will witness soon. The Humberland trainer has been, Fisio rather, has been a busy man since the start of this game. May be a leg injury, a knee injury that's troubling Dunkett. The right knee being attended to. So that's only a bigger Thompson checking the progress of Lewis just now. But he also has some silky skills too. This is him lifting it over the head of the advancing Ricardo Dennis. And 
That ball trying to hit Marvin Morgan on the right hand side. Going straight, that one aimless again. Turned over possession. And coming through and putting out a fire there. Block, crucial block. That could have been the first goal for Humberland. And then a body check on Gregory Lewis just now conceding the free kick and then schooling the Maradican at the end of that reel. Yeah. All action from the captain. O'Neill Bigger Thompson. Oldest player on the field at the moment at 34. And Romario Campbell prepares to strike a free kick. That looks threatening. Humpeline looking for a strike here. Heard right across and that's Thompson again with a sliding challenge and the clearance. Another good set piece delivered from Campbell. He placed it in a zone where anything could happen. Harris under some pressure, gets rid of the ball quickly. Reed for Arnett. Reed's pass forward looking for Morgan. Morgan being chased here by Howell. Can't keep it in. Poor from Marvin Morgan. Though. Maybe it's a good thing he, he wasn't able to keep it in because if he did I'm pretty sure Howell would have made him feel some pain knowing how Howell tackles yeah but he had so much time to chase and gather Marvin Morgan not his usual standard on that particular passage of play Manning Cup winner with uh, St. George's College back in 2009 Morgan and there's a Manning Cup champion as well Howell with Excelsior in 0405. Just over six minutes to the halftime break. And this has been a tense battle here between two teams. Almost at opposite ends of the table. Arnett leaders on 26 points. Humbland 10th. Just outside the relegation zone with 13 points. Actually as many as four points above 11th place. Sandal South Coast. But in an unfamiliar position Humbland at this point in the season. Last year when they were regular season champions, I don't think they were outside of the top five. Never for, for any period of the season, maybe briefly in September when the tournament just started. Well, I, I can't remember them being worse than fifth no. on the table. No, they, they certainly weren't. Deacon, exciting player Deacon, still with the ball. Under pressure, Big Howell robs him of the ball and Humbleland are now on the counter-attack. Howell goes wide for Campbell. Campbell doesn't beat Deacon. Poor clearance by Thompson. Howell. Anderson picks up a loose ball for Arnett Gardens. Gets by his man well. Reed with a good pass forward for Morgan. Morgan full of running down the right flank. Keeps the ball well, Morgan. The cross inside. Deacon gets close to it, but Howell gives up a corner on the far post. Are they just not consistent with their composure and their use of the ball? That attack was good. The interplay among the different players. But Humberland's hard running and hard tackling has knocked out a little of the composure that you usually see with the Arnett Gardens team, especially with their build-up from midfield. Short corner taken, now Harris has it for Arnett Gardens. Oh, the cross inside. Fancy, unable to get the ball away. Ball falls. Loose there for Chabot Johnson, and the ball inside, the header on goal! Arnett Gardens in front for Vishnu Harris! the season and the home fans celebrating four minutes before the halftime break an inquest inquest in the humble and defense no lance the goalkeeper and his defenders are wondering how did one man steal in amongst three defenders and the goalkeeper and steer that header goalwards look at Hugh Howell he made a back for Vishnul Harris rose above Hugh Howell who couldn't get up to his full height and then the verbals what did you say i'm not good at rubbish did you say that did you see that that's what probably harris just told howell as he walks away from the scene of the crime 
Well, they've been having verbal exchanges for fully about 20 minutes now, Howell and uh, Harris. Harris has drawn first blood here with a headed strike, beating Howell for the header. And at the moment, Harris looks brilliant. Howell embarrassed. That's the equivalent, Lance of a man dunking in your face in a basketball game. Exactly. <laughs> now, Harris wants to get a bit cheeky here. So the home team taking the lead here. Wow. Parkins goes down hurt. Parchment takes the yellow card out. For Edwards, is it? Yes. And Lewis wanted more justice because he was saying it was a red card offense. The referee going. This is Parkins. And I, 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 I can't see a lot wrong with that. Yeah. The arm came through, but the arm has to come through the player's earborn. Yeah. This is a man's game, yeah, yes. That looks a marginal yellow card. Yes. Glad that Parkins is all right, though. And he's upset. Can't believe the shambolic defending which facilitated the goal. Thompson with a clearance. Duckworth under pressure from Reed. Almost being forced into an error there. There goes Wolf. Slides the ball forward, but much too far forward there for Campbell to chase. Oh, that's a poor kick out there from Hyatt. Snatched up by Lewis. Lewis goes goalwards. Still Lewis. Keeps the ball well. Reed. Lewis again. Lewis goes for goal. Hyatt with a tumbling save. There were defenders protecting him as well. May have hurt himself. He's a big man. Damien Hart and there's been a lot of rain here but the ground is still hard and rather untidy in the end but effective nonetheless and maybe just days just needs to catch his breath yeah. Damien Hart yeah fell pretty heavily there Damien Hart well that goal again Lance the humble land defenders have a lot of explaining to do yeah that's... three of them on the spot and Harry soars among them over Hugh Howell takes a ride on Hugh Howell's shoulders and beats the Humberland goalkeeper. Fancy for Humberland Hilton. Howell Hilton. Arnett Sharper on the ball in midfield, and there goes Anderson. Putting the pressure on and commits a foul. You better be careful, he's on one yellow card. Four men in the referee's book already. Two from either team. Damar Dika. Crowd favor. Kaneel High. This pass is cut off easily. Hilton. Fancy. Humbland on the breakaway. Martin reads the play beautifully for Arnett Gardens. Whistle. Yeah, player down. Yeah, Hilton took a shot to the ankle as he released that pass to Vanzi. Or just beneath the shin pad. Really hard blow. He's in a lot of pain. Just a bit of that on for stoppages, which has now expired. Here's the play once again as Hilton challenged very, very strongly from behind by Johnson. Kicked on the leg. Not escaping the view of the referee. And a drop ball. And there isn't much time left to be played now in this half. So Arnett Garns looking poised to go to the halftime break with the lead on the Vishnal Harris strike. And it's fair to say, Dennis hasn't been the same since going down with that leg injury, Lance. Yes. 
hasn't buzzed with the same menace he did before half time referee parchment has seen enough of the first 45 minutes and there's the man of the moment for on it garns additional harris the 24 year old former tamper down man and his on-field rival hugh howell probably has a marking up job on Vishnal Harris tonight but he didn't do a good job of that on that cross and the headed goal by Vishnal Harris so Arnett Gardens then with a Vishnal Harris first half strike in front at the halftime break by one goal to nil at the Tony Spalling Sports Complex back in a moment with a first half review One bag of gold medal pan me up. Red stripe alone champion boy go. Pan up for them a singing and ten to. Red stripe. Watcha, watcha, watcha. Man, shall I make forward boy? Red stripe Premier League champion boy sport. Every goal win a run from boy. Red stripe Premier League champion boy love. The Red Stripe Premier League for champions only. Jerome Waite, coach of the Arnett Garns team, looking on there. O'Neill Bigger Thompson, captain, and Arnett Garns having a lot of attacking attentions early. Thompson, the team leader, and his team is in front on a Vishnal Harris 42nd minute header by one goal to nil over the visiting Humber Land. It's been a first half that saw from some end to end stuff. Strong shot from Tamar Edwards from distance. Plunk it in goal for. Humberland having some difficulty contending with that one. Great pass inside there by Ricardo Dennis. Parkins just arriving late. Hyatt with a brilliant foot save. Really alert there, Hyatt on that play. Arnett's defense had some work to do early. Dennis's ferocious right footed shot there, blocked brilliantly by O'Neill Thompson. Hilton with a strike from distance, Hyatt with a fine diving save. Again, Thompson in defense for Arnett Garns like a stalwart. Vance trying to get the ball away here. Arnett putting a lot of pressure on Humbland in the first half. The head goal from Fishnal Harris soaring above the rivals. And heading in beautifully, Plunkett was left flat-footed, had no chance there, and Arnett Garns taking a 1-0 advantage. So, at halftime, 43% of the ball by Arnett Garns, but they have the most crucial statistic, one goal uh, to the good over Humberland. They had two goal attempts on target, well, two goal attempts, one on target, nine fouls by Arnett Garns, ten by Humberland, and both teams are sharing four yellow cards right down the middle. Two for Arnett, two for Humberland. So, at halftime, members of the crowd, some gone to get themselves refreshed, at halftime in this contest, Arnett Garns leading it 1 0 to the good over Humble Lion. Uh, the top plays from round one of the RSPL have been sliced and diced and spliced for our production team for your enjoyment. Here we go.
Italy. Good perseverance, but if you look at this, the effort by Hurst, original shot blocked, all the defender, the defender has to take charge of that situation. Oldham, good cross from Oldham. Reed, earn it, back in business. First goal of the season for the standout player in last year's championship winning season for Arnett Gardens and Harrison is breached. A lovely ball. So it was this one at the back post, headed towards goal. What a finish! Raheem Porter puts that one away. Almost got away with it. This is Harris into the path of Anderson. Back to Harris. Has some space to work with now. Harris more. Deacon making up the ground. He's this is Deacon. Finds the net with the low drive. Put it strike from Damari Deacon, combined with Michelin Harris, and just like that, Aaron Gardens find the jugular of Harbour Fuel, and they draw the night. Marshall, great skill from the 19-year-old, still Marshall, oh look at Marshall down through the cross, oh the wall is in the back of the net. Brilliant play from uh, Alex Marshall. Look at him get the ball here in the left hand channel. Two men coming to tackle. He takes on both of them. Not satisfied with it on his right foot. Works himself to the byline to get it on his favorite left foot. The cross is good and Reed was at the back post. The Clark. Can he catch this? Oh, yes. Clark has acres of space to run into. Still Clark. Goes for the shot. Steve Clark. Like a genius. His third touch of the game, his first was the control, second was to set himself up, looked up and saw something that only he saw. That man still hasn't seen it. Marsh. Marshall. Hamilton has gone to the far post. Oh, that's goal number two. Chevron Marsh springs Alex Marshall and there was only one thing he was going to do and that's pick out Hamilton at the far post. Marshall on the sprint. Hamilton begging him for it to his right. And Marshall obliges his second assist of the game. Morris wins it ahead of Bennett. McGregor again deciding to cut inside. Brought down free kick in a dangerous position. Junior McGregor is behind this one. For Tivoli. McGregor with the effort. Oh, what a brilliant strike! The Tivoli Gardens number seven comes up, drops off the bench. A super strike from the super sub. Tivoli Gardens one. Have a few nil. <laughs> Julian Any dispute over number one goal so nah, far this season? It, it was sumptuous, that free kick from Julian McGregor. All right, action coming up on the channel this week as we uh, catch uh, live shots of the crowd here at the Tony Spalling Sports Complex. Good football game, a good contest between Humberland and Arnett Gardens. The home team in front, 1-0 at the halftime. The Red Strike Premier League for Champions Only. Arnett Gardens in front here by one goal to nil on that Vishnul Harris headed goal from the Marvin Morgan right sided cross and a bit of banter there between Hugh Howell and the Arnett men. There it is, Harris's 42nd minute strike just three minutes before the halftime break, giving Arnett the 1 0 
lead over Humberland at halftime. A first half that has seen some scrappy football, especially early on when the teams took some time to get their rhythm going. Yeah, Humberland didn't start positively at all, turning over the ball in dangerous situations and uh, to the home team's home, the home crowd's frustration on it, couldn't capitalize. Marvin Morgan with the cross there. Hilton giving it straight to Oneil Anderson. He starts an attack. Harris's first touch letting him down, letting him down there. And then look at this. Long pass closed down by Marvin Morgan and <laughs> luckily Duckworth on the premises. Arnett Gardens weren't immune to the poor passing either. This is Ricardo Dennis and look at O'Neill Thompson sliding across his line of sight and effecting the block. Yeah, Dennis outstanding earlier in the game but then had a bit of a, an interest here middle of that first half and has not been as potent since then. Damien had. Uh, goalkeeper for Arnett Garns leading his team of te teammates out. Yeah, the fleet-footed Ricardo Dennis figured prominently for Humberland in the first half of the first half. This through ball aimed for Parkins and uh, the sweeper keeper coming out in Damien Hyatt and then it took that effort from Bigger Thompson to deny him and there's Dennis once again takes aim. Martin Sticking to him and then Jabir Johnson coming across to bail his central defensive partner out. Hilton goes from distance. Ball retrieved by Dennis and then this is Dennis sprinting across. This is where he picked up the injury. Hobbled off, took some painkillers but really hasn't been the same since then. Yeah, he's looked a little less potent in the second part of that first half. And uh, hopefully for humble Land's sake, he can get his game resuscitated because they certainly need his quality in offense to get back into this game. Arnett Garns, a team that usually gets stronger when they're in front, buoyed by their home fans. And there's their man of the moment, Richard Vishnu Harris, who's goal three minutes from the halftime break, has them in front by one goal to nil. They've surrendered a lot of the ball position to humble Land in, in the half. But let's see what the second half serves up now for the fans here at the Tony Spalding Sports Complex. Howell back to Duckworth. Now to Reed, the captain of the day for Humberland. It would be fair to say that Hugh Howell owes his teammates, Lance. Yes, he does. Humberland's leading scorer so far this season, actually on the bench. Ulri Wolf, the 36-year-old, has three goals. And off the ball, Harris and Howell continue their reacquaintance. Come on, come on, come on. Coming into this game, Humberland had conceded just one goal in their last three matches, so they appeared as if they were getting their defensive rules sorted out. But that there they are. Fishnell Harris goal. <laughs> Harris and how will continue to exchange pleasant words. <laughs> Just put a bit of a scare there on that as he went backpedaling towards his back post. He got a touch, it's a corner. Didn't want to take any chances there. Didn't the corner here at the start of the second half. Fancy goes across to take it. National selection in 2016. Here he is in the number 12 shirt, preparing to look just one inside. Just about three or four green shirts in the box to aim at. Morgan getting the ball away. Reed getting close to it. Parkins putting some pressure on. And there goes Morgan with room. Still Morgan. Still Morgan. Morgan! Sliding challenge breaks the attack up for Humbland. And the defender down hurt at the moment. In the meantime, Dennis tries to get going for Humbland. Whistle. Oh, the referee now calls the playback because he's now going to give some attention to the Humbland. That looks to be Lewis. Down. Gregory Lewis. Yeah, he's hurt. Stand just close to the penalty spot. I'm wondering if it's the shoulder. The same side he was. Knocked on by Bigger Thompson in the first half. Goes down and it looks to be the right shoulder which is the problem for Gregory Lewis. 
Humbland upset at the point at which referee Parchment called a halt to proceedings because they had just won the ball back in the Arnett half. He's now starting to look a worried man, Lance. Yeah. Taking over this Humbland team, which had been in strife with a pretty dodgy record coming into this match only three wins four draws and five losses but as we said in the first round did hold one uh, Arnett Garns to a 1-1 scoreline there so would have felt with their steadying form in the past few weeks would have come to the Tony Spalling Sports Complex here looking for a result and that right shoulder yes George giving Gregory Reed a lot of trouble yeah, well, I know a thing or a three about dislocated shoulders. I was fretting for him for a moment, but then I saw him ball a fist. When your shoulder is dislocated, you can't do that. So <laughs> I was satisfied it wasn't too serious. Referee Parchment is going to do a drop ball here, and Arnett Sportingly just gives the ball back to Humberland and Duckworth long clearance downfield to Dennis Parkins. Howell under some pressure oh and gives the ball away Deacon sets the ball toward Harris but it's Duckworth that gets the clearance cool Duckworth under pressure and gives the ball away so a pretty scrappy start here to the second half Lance Fabian Reed defense he's a coach's dream not only does he score goals as a number 13 man for Arnett Gardens, he defends so well from in front. Superb work rate and engine on him. Handball against Marvin Morgan, it seems. Yeah. Appears to be contesting the call as well. A Rafa Wolf doesn't want to take the kick. He wants Duckworth to come across and allow him an opportunity to go searching upfield for a scoring opportunity. Duckworth, long kick right toward the penalty spot. Hyatt with the easy take. Huge toss up for the ball there, and the referee has spotted an infringement and is awarding a free kick to Arnett Garns close to the halfway line. Lewis is back on. Gordon. Struggling for answers. He won't be the first to come to the Tony Spalding Sports Complex as an opposing coach and finding difficulties. All right, have won four of their six matches at home here so far this season. So traditionally very, very strong at the Tony Spalding Sports Complex and those stats again in evidence here in the first three months of the season. Hilton fighting hard for the ball and Deacon tumbles over, grabs the ball and Maron Gordon helps the little man out. Howell. Duckworth. Fancy unable to keep the ball in, but he was shoved in the back there. I've been watching Hugh Howell since the start of the second half, Lance. I don't think he's as fit as we normally see him. Haven't seen him make any of those forays from the midfield, the defensive midfield position to join the attackers. He usually does that once or twice per half. Maybe playing conservatively. Campbell. Header out back, Edwards. Lewis goes down. Hyde. Morgan. Reed wants it. Morgan changes the plan. Still Morgan. Edwards. Fancy intercepts for Humberland. Dennis is under some pressure. Mart uh, Martin steals the ball from him. Has played him very well, Lance. Yes, he has. Powell knocks Marvin Morgan over. And with that said, for the first 25 minutes, Dennis 
won that particular duel. But Martin has even the score since. Camille Hyde. Hyde makes room for himself. Oh, that's Harris with a strike from the 18-yard edge. Just goes wide there, but beautiful build-up play by Arnett Garns. And uh, Reed just setting the ball back there. Harris just not connecting well with the ball. Yeah, two challenges coming in. And he mutters a curse word there, ruining his bad luck. But good defending from the humble line players. Whistle. Our free parchment has been busy here with the start of the second half. Well, Mario Campbell has been invisible for Humberland the longer this game has gone on. He's the playmaker, well, nominally, but he hasn't been doing any playmaking for the longest while. Uh, Hilton, holding the back of the head, was bumped by Keneal Hyde. Second time we've seen Hilton go down. He went down pretty early in the match as well. So, so far, it's been a tough night here for Humberland. Actually, Jabir Johnson. Yeah, a collision of heads there. Johnson, apparently, unhurt. We must remind the viewers that this is not the strongest Arnett Guards defense. Raniki Anderson, who has been outstanding for them for the past two seasons, is not among the team. He's not in the team. Morgan gets away for Arnett. Crashes the ball into the advertising board behind the goal. Mm. Didn't like his options. Deacon was streaming into his left. Fabian Reed was arriving at not centrally, but not up with the play. And that's why Morgan decided that he had to go by himself. Because as you can see from the replay, the attacking, the supporting attackers behind him. Yeah, late in arriving for some assistance or some passing options inside for Morgan. Thompson goes wide looking for Deacon. Hilton under some pressure. Attempts to fancy back heel, but Anderson slides in. Commits the foul there on Vanzi. And the referee awards Humbland with a free kick on the right. Very lucky to escape a yellow card, Daniel Anderson. That was a bad challenge. Have to start thinking now about some options. Baron Gordon may be considering coming from the bench. Players like Levon Williams. 28-year-old former Lennon player who has very, very good attacking skills because at the moment, Humberland looking to be lacking on the offensive end. Yeah, not getting anything from the man who's about to take this free kick from Mario Campbell. Has done his best work from set pieces. Let's see if he can continue that trend. Six green shirts on the box waiting for a scoring opportunity for Humberland. Fancy goes for the strike. And miss kicks the ball badly. Pressure. Tight congested space the ball bobbling around red shirts and green shirts a melee and couldn't get a clean strike yeah that was kevin reed in fact the captain overlapping from central defense getting the right boot onto that one in the end hat and goal for on at gardens Guns have given up just nine goals so far this season. Anderson tucked from behind by Fancy. Making sure that they Keep us trying to hold on this game. Harris slides the ball forward for Deacon. Deacon gets the strong challenge from Duckworth, but wins a throw for his side. Duckworth has been solid at central defense for Humberland tonight. Yes, he has. Anderson. 
Kicks up all the way. Pretty sloppy looking play there from Anderson. And Humberland now are on the counter attack with Rafi Wolf. Parkin puts the ball forward here for Dennis, who goes into the box. Dennis Doug. Oh, that's a beautiful challenge from Jamar Martin in defense. Great tackle there that aborts the offensive play from Ricardo Dennis. Humberland, though, still trying to keep their attacking game going. Parkins loses the battle to Edwards. Now high. Morgan wants the ball and gets it. Powell shoves high and over. And he's livid at the referee's call. Good call by the referee. <laughs> Clear foul by Hugh Howell. Campbell. Parkins. Fancy. Campbell. Still Campbell. Over dribbles and loses it. Now Hyde tries to go away down the right. And he also loses it as well. Wolf with a quick throw for Humberland. Hilton under pressure. Parkins. Duckworth. Ball is over the touchline for a throw. Oh no, the ball is still in. Thompson's clearance upfield. Deacon. <laughs> Lewis comes in and bangs the ball away. And every time Deacon touches the ball, the crowd gets excited. No matter what he does. A little man. Only 21 years old. Full of natural ball handling skills. Morgan. Wolf puts the pressure on. Morgan does well to protect the ball. Reed with the clearance for home for uh, Humberland. And now Johnson just shadows and allows the ball to go across for a throw. Double change being made by Humberland now. Levon Williams among them. Jeremy and Christian looks to be another one. Yeah, so Jeremy and Christian and Levon Williams coming in. And they are replacing. Dennis is coming out. Dennis. So Dennis exits the game. So some offensive thrust. And the Romario Campbell is coming out. And Jeremy and Christian is in for him. So. As we suspected, George, yes. Humberland needing some injection on the front end of their game. And it now comes in the form of Christian and Levon Williams. Confirmation of those changes. Williams was actually leading scorer for Humberland two seasons ago. Francois Swaby there, leading scorer last season, now playing his football in El Salvador. Martin for Anit Gardens. Marvin Morgan. Dribbling, 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 and losing it. Now he commits a foul. Christian almost got away there and uh, Morgan took him down that would have been pretty close to a yellow card infringement yeah I'm wondering why Danian Parchment didn't take out the yellow card because look at that that was yeah. a scissor tackle yeah and he saw the player was getting away so it was a professional foul as well and that was perilously close to a yellow card there from Morgan but he brought all that on himself by holding on to the ball too long ball crossed inside Anderson with a headed clearance, and now Morgan has it again. Reed can't beat Duckworth for this ball. Throw to Humberland. Parkin under pressure. Morgan takes the ball, but not legally. 
Parkins. Christian. Oh, delightful ball through to Fancy. In the box, Fancy under pressure. Tumbles over from the Anderson challenge. Whistle. The ball wasn't kept in. What a delightful pass from Christian. Oh, that was a beauty. Vance's first touch was good, but the recovering tackle was even better. And went over theatrically. Look at this for a diagonal. Lovely first touch. And then Anderson, big and strong and fast. Yeah, he hit him pretty hard when that was a shoulder to shoulder challenge. Well, it was more it? like hip to hip. Yeah. Struck pretty hard there in the back. Not well, a penalty. No, no protest from the fancy at all. Both of them challenging for the ball. But the force of. Anderson knocking Vanzi over. Vanzi had scored for Humberland when they drew 1-1 with an Arnett Garns in the first round. Reed. Oh, that's Hyde under pressure, but wins a free kick for Arnett on the right side. Raka Wolf with the challenge knocking Hyde over Martin holding on to the ball Hyde can he get the cross inside still has the ball Hyde plunk it with ease a taking goal for Humberland good first touch from Hilton but then his second touch is poor Arnest defense have coped very well with the threat of the Humberland forwards when Dennis was hot in the first 25 minutes, they just about hung in there through luck and good work. And then Martin started bossing Ricardo Dennis in the one-on-ones. No different problem for them to solve with the introduction of Williams and Christian. Parkins with a wasted ball upfield. Lewis hurriedly gets the ball forward for Vancey, who is under some pressure from Anderson. Who does really well there? Leaves Vancy on the floor. Arnett now looking smooth in attack. Reed with the header out. Hilton under some pressure. One against two, but Reed would probably try to use his speed here to get by Johnson. Johnson tracking really well. The cross inside of Martin with a fine sliding save. Superb from both players. Corey Hilton taking on Javier Johnson for pace and beating him. And then his cross was expertly dealt with by the tracking Jamar Martin. Vanzi's down, getting some treatment now. But good attacking play, good defending. Tremendous defending that was from Martin because Levon Williams was there lur lurking on the penalty spot. And if Martin had missed that, there's Vanzi, who is down at the moment from that challenge. That's not a foul, though. Appears to have been some kind of collision there at the back of his head. Howell rehydrating himself there twice. So the big man trying to get some extra energy. It's Hamilton from the Cavalier along with Hamilton, yeah. Chevron Marsh. Yeah, the two of the MMH attacking force of Cavalier. Marsh, Marshall, Hamilton. So Vance looks a little unsteady. So Humberland down to 10 men at the moment. But still searching for an equalizer. Williams under some pressure. Very skillful player, Williams. Wolf. Howell. Great ball forward. Oh. Williams was unable to take control of the ball. That looked to have been an incisive pass from Howell through the defense. Huge challenge for the ball and the little man standing firm there, Parkins. Williams does well to keep the ball in. Has good pace, Williams. 
There's creativity lacking there, though, and he's it, unable to get by. Reed kicks the ball miles into the air. McIntosh warming up for Humbleland and Kevon Isaacs, former Manchester high player. So, coach Marin Gordon looking to get even more players in the hunt now for Humbleland. Wolf puts the brakes on. Marvin Morgan again. A couple of players have gone quiet for Arnett Gardens. Vishnul Harris. Haven't seen much of him in the second half. The player has bypassed him somewhat. Williams challenging there. Harris. Johnson has to go sprinting to retrieve this one. Looking for Anderson down the left channel. Anderson and Howell battling for the ball. Howell does really well there. Lewis. Hilton. Can't get the return play to Lewis. And now Arnett with the ball again down the left side. Anderson. Harris. Harris a little lazy there and losing the ball. Parkins. Christian. Lewis tries to get Hilton going. Hilton scrambles to keep the ball in, but then gives it away. Humbleland looking better in the last seven or ten minutes. Yeah, I would suggest that the injection of Christian and Williams helping them at the moment. Hyde. Oh, great done it here by Harris. Deacon sets the ball back. Almost getting by his man. Oh, the shot from distance is high. From Anderson. Trying to curl it into the top left-hand corner on Neil Anderson. With the right foot. Didn't miss by much. And had goalkeeper Plunkett interested all the way. This is Hyde's pass. Dummy by Harris. Deacon. Losing the handle on the dribble. But then the ball comes loose to Anderson. Watch him pick his head up. Aim for that top left corner. Not even close. I can confirm on the replay. Martin has an all stand standing game for Arnett Garns in defense tonight. He allows his captain to make that clearance, though. had a clean sheet since their nil-nil draw with Portmore a few weeks ago. Another substitution being lined up by Humberland Lance. Corey Hilton has taken a few blows already this evening. He's said to be replaced by number 29. Well, 25. Corey Hilton is going to come out. We'll tell you who will replace him shortly. Wilson Deacon has gone down McIntosh is the man that's going to come on Gary McIntosh yeah for Corey number Hilton. 20 yes so Hilton exits the game former Montego Bay United player and former Waterhouse player as well yeah McIntosh also spent half of the season at Arnett Garns two seasons ago. Now he's up against them. Parkins. Howell. Fancy. Strong challenges in midfield. O'Neill Anderson there. Crunching with his challenges, strong young 20 year old really making the humble and players here uncomfortable at the Tumuli Spalling Sports Complex. Fancy turns over the ball, and Harris, one of the coolest players in the domestic game here. 
Morgan. Still Morgan. Hyde. Great football there for Morgan. Sends Hyde sprinting down the right flank. Hyde being closely attended by Parkins. Corner to Arnett Gardens. Yeah, Hyde should have gone to the byline and taken on Parkins here. Has the physical edge, could have barged his way past the little man and gotten the crossing. Harris. Oh, this is vintage Harris, but he's robbed of the ball eventually here by Levon Williams. Now McIntosh. Christian forced to go all the way back with the ball to Wolf. Poor play by Humble and Lance because on that passage of play when Christian was going back to his goal, Lewis was in acres of space over on the right, begging for the ball, and he wasn't spotted. Reed under some pressure. Oh, unable to keep the ball in. And from that same passage of play, Humberland turned the ball over. So poor play from the team in green. So Gordon has now played his cards for Humberland from the bench. So the players on the field now for Humberland will have to take the fight for the re remaining 16 minutes. Exciting skills there from Reed Williams for Humberland. Fancy gives the ball away. Oh, LeVon Williams with the fortune just re receiving of the ball. Ball crossed inside. Oh, the header on goal! Kerry McIntosh, former Arnett player, scores against his old team. And Humberland are 1-1 at the Tony Spalling Sports Complex. And guess what? That was a combination of the three substitutes, Lance. LeVon Williams was the original ball carrier. This is him picking up possession here. German Christian calls for it. A very good cross, a clipped cross. Jamar Martin, his first mistake of the day, missing the header. This is Christian, just clips the ball across the 86-yard the the six, the six box. And Gary McIntosh lurking behind Jamar Martin. To be fair to Martin, the ball was behind him. He'd have to be a few inches taller to have gotten there. The result is 1-1, one, one. the three substitutes combining. Coach Moran Gordon looks smart at the end of that all. The 33-year-old former Godfrey Stewart player gets his first goal of the season. And Humberland are on their way to getting a point from this fixture. Still a lot of time left. Over 14 minutes plus time to be added on for stoppages. And Plunkett in the Humberland goal. Appears to be laboring. Encouraged by his teammate to get a move on. Two substitutes, well, at least one. Steve Clark looks as if he's preparing to come in for Arnett Guards. And maybe Deacon is coming out. Yes, Deacon is the man who's going to get the hook. Steve Clark, who scored a stupendous goal the last time we were here for Monday Night Football against Harborview. He's going to replace him. Clark, a 22-year-old former Donald Quarry student. Now about to get some playing time as Deacon is about to exit the game. So, to be fair, Arnett has gone a bit flat here for long periods in the second half. And Humberland with an injection of substitutes clawing their way back to the 1-1 scoreline. So the game restarts and Williams steals the ball here for Humberland. Williams goes charging forward. Oh, that's a great challenge from Tamar Edwards in midfield for Arnett. Clark gets his first touch off the ball, the substitute. High. Goes long. Lewis 
averts the danger, if only temporarily, because Arnett still have possession of the ball. Anderson over dribbles a bit. Gets the benefit of the referee's call. Aggressive challenge from Vanzi. The referee giving him the final warning. He's been warning him since the first half, Andrew Vanzi. Next foul, he's going to go into the book. Well, he was already on a yellow card, wasn't he, Vanza, from the first half? No, he wasn't booked in the first, booked in the first half. Barnett. Parkins getting the ball away. Lance Humberland must not retreat into the fence now. They must continue to play as they were before the equaliser. Can't invite pressure from Arnett Gardens. Martin. Pressure. Parkins. Oh, gives up a corner. Poor, poor, poor from Parkins. Just needed some composure there. Clark wasn't holding him as he thought. Had room to turn, face the play, and effect a clearance downfield. Corner kick here from Keneal Hyde for Arnett Gardens, looking to get back into the game, and into the lead, I should say. Or restore their 1-0 advantage or one goal advantage. But Thompson's header isn't about to make that happen. Just over 10 minutes of normal time remaining. It's as if the energy has been sucked out of the Tony's balling sports complex. The fans now nervous and pondering the possibility of only getting a point from this game. Clark gets a challenge from Parkins, who comes back and does some good defensive work, although he gives up a corner. The big units going forward for Arnett Barnes once again. Thompson jogging forward. Clark. McIntosh, McIntosh still trying to turn Martin inside out. McIntosh now looking for support. Too much weight on that pass forward, looking for Christian. And he apologizes, Gary McIntosh, realizing the ball was too straight. I wanted to make another change. Number 17 coming out. That's Kenny Hyde. And 18, Lamar Neal coming in. More speed being summoned off the bench by Jerome Waite. So, Neil now about to get some playing time. Hyde worked hard tonight for Arnett. Arnett's game here in the second half hasn't looked as efficient and purposeful as it did in the first half. Point. Maybe these substitutions now will address that. Handball, free kick to Arnett on the left side. Eight and a half minutes of normal time remaining. Edwards, Martin. Set back here and Howell is trying to get the ball away. Does so eventually, McIntosh is under pressure. Johnson with a strong challenge. Harris on the drive on goal. A bit of a deflection there from the Johnson effort. Three substitutions by Coach Baron Gordon and he coaxed an impact, a response from his team. Three of them combining for the equalizer. Clark sets. Neil going down the right side. Oh, no one there. It was Lewis that got there first with the clearance for Humberland. So, Arnett with Neil and Clark on as substitutes, immediately injecting some more energy into, into their attacking play. Harris 
felt he was tripped. Yeah. I, I think he was. Did look inadvertent. Thompson. Williams. Howell. Christian goes sprinting away down the right side. O'Neill Anderson has so much pace. Oh, he doesn't get the ball before Christian does. McIntosh. McIntosh holds the play up. Tumbling over there was Gregory Lewis as he went forward for the ball. Rafael Wolf. Oh, with an attempted clearance. Not getting any distance on the clearance, and it's Parkins that gets in there now. Howell with the ball again. Williams. Fancy. Parkins. Howell. Cumberland growing in confidence coming up to the last six minutes of this match. Fancy. Williams. Thompson with a clearance. Howell intercepts. McIntosh under pressure there. Johnson with a robust challenge. Foul. And Howell was all over Vishnu Harris there. That was a high kick. Mm. The knee catching Harris in the chest. Howell knows he can't allow Vishnu Harris too much time on the ball or space. Harris, a high quality midfielder for Arnett Gardens. Rastaman with an eye patch. Mm. Clark goes for the cross inside. Reed trying to set the ball up here for Lamar Neal, whose side footed effort goes high. That was a chance. Poor technique by Neal. Needed to get over that one. Easier said than done. But may have needed to take a little bunny hop and crashed through that with the instep. Look at the good play from Fabian Reed to set him up. And yeah, he, he had a little bit more time. Poor connection. Was only ever going to go over the bar. Duckworth does well. Parkins is under pressure. Anderson fights hard for the ball, doesn't win it. And Parkins tries to keep the ball in and does. Lewis sprays the ball forward, but Thompson gets there first for on it. Good pressure by Gary McIntosh, forcing the mistake. Well, Hayat will say he just cleared it to get his allow his defenders to reset. But it's a throw in an attacking position for Humberland. So hard for several minutes into the second half, having scored in the 42nd minute. Enjoying a lead and pressing for a victory. Their eighth from this would be 13 games. Corner. Losing the lead to the McIntosh header. I did note that Humberland is one team that's not intimidated by playing here at Tony Spalling and not a team that backs down from the physical approach that Arnett Gardens takes to the game sometimes. They've stood up and given as good as they've got and that's why it's 1-1 in this game. Corner taken short. Humberland with a cross inside. Again. Thompson, who has done good defensive work for his team tonight. Ball overruns Lewis a bit. Fancy comes sprinting forward down the channel. Thompson gets rid of the ball. Parkins. Morgan. Swift counter-attack by Arnett Gardens. Steve Clark. Reed wants the ball, Clark goes for the strike, it hits the post and comes out, what a strike! 
That would have been a cracking goal from Steve Clark. Came in with a swing where he wanted the pass. He ignored the instruction. Look at Michigan Harris outside of the boot to Clark in space. Harris Reed showing where he wants it. He doesn't go there. And oh, how unlucky. The underside of the crossbar. Maybe even some of the post. And plunk it. Running around like Alice in Wonderland. Oh, he had no clue, didn't he, plunk it? Didn't even know where the ball was ending up. What a strike from Steve Clark. Anxiety in the humble lines fans face faces. That could have been the winner for Arnett. Less than two minutes of normal time remaining. The fourth official will decide how much time will be added on for stoppages. Bit of an awkward attempt at clearance there by Thompson. Martin unsighted now. And Williams wins the ball for Humberland. Oh, he's dribbling in the opposite direction. Wolf to Williams. Parkins. Howell. Great pass by Howell inside to Christian. Christian goes for the strike. The deflection. Williams is unable to get to it. He does now. Keeps the ball in. No, he doesn't. Goal kick to Arnett. Chance for Christian. Caught the heel of one of the retreating players. And that's what took the sting out of it, Jeremy and Christian. Actually, it's a good block from Jabir Johnson standing up to the ball. Yeah, Williams just there, unable to keep the ball in. Humbland finishing up this game a lot better than they played most of the match tonight. Three minutes will be added on for stoppages. How it commits a foul here as he drags Vishnu Harris down. These two have had a huge battle here tonight. Neil goes for the cross inside. Oh, this put down by Reed. Did really well there, looking to find Clark with a one time pass. Three minutes. Yeah, Reed Road goes up. Reed hasn't looked like scoring tonight, although he's their leading goal scorer, but he has been doing a good job of trying to set other players up with scoring opportunities. Showing his versatility. Good play by McIntosh. Protecting that ball from Javier Johnson. Here's McIntosh, the man that hit the equalizer to have the game at 1 1 for Humberland. The point for Humberland will feel like three points. The point for Arnett will feel like a defeat, Lance. Yeah, although to their credit, it would stretch their unbeaten record to 13 games by far the best unbeaten run in the league so far this year but they still feel as if it's a match they threw away yeah there were long periods of this game that Humbland looked as if they had no answer to what Arnett was doing additional Harris Harris still still Harris room for Harris oh Harris still has it his cross inside is a great one the header out and Howell will not prepare to launch him on upfield Christian Turns well. Hates the pass from Christian looking for Williams. Great challenge from Jamar Martin. Now, the man from Donald Quarry High School. Just too much weight on the pass for Vishnu Harris. Wanted it to feet. Didn't want it into space. Wasn't prepared to chase it at the in the almost the 90 minute, 90th minute of the game. But look at this driving run from Harris. Fools everyone, thinking he was going to pass there, just clipping the ball back, looking for the back post and Fabian Reed and two defenders right on Reed's shoelaces. Yeah. Good defending. Foul. McIntosh is fouled by Anderson, I think. Free kick here from Tumbleland. Just over a minute remaining of the three minutes added on for stoppages. Anderson is being substituted here for Arnett Gardens. Ronaldo right is on in his place. So right in for Anderson. 40 seconds now remaining in the match, and it's locked at 1-1. And Humberland on the verge here of earning a point and stretching their own unbeaten record to four games. Which on a on a on a wide scale 
isn't a bad run for them given the moderate season they've been having. Yeah, baby steps from Aaron Gordon, but in his two games in charge from a possible six points, he'd have taken four. Yeah. Ablan, throw deep. Oh, the ball has gone behind now for a goal kick, so that could have been one of the final plays of the match. Uh, so we are now on to the full three minutes expiring. It's over. And a referee, Damian Parchment, agrees. 1 1 the scoreline. A late first half strike for Arnett Gardens from Vishnal Harris, cancelled by this man, Gary McIntosh, the substitute in the second half for Humberland. And a share of the points here. And the two national squad members, Fancy and Vishnal Harris, have a quiet word at the end of the game. There they are. Yes, some mutual respect there from the two midfielders. It's been a hard fought battle. Arnett Garns looking on top for most of the game, but Humberland fighting back and earning a point here. Maron Gordon trying to resuscitate Humberland's season. The full-time score then. McIntosh's 75th minute strike with the head. Cancelling out the 42nd minute header from Vishnal Harris. 1-1 to Arnett Gardens, who by virtue of that point move Two points clear at the top of the table now with 27 points to lead Portmore by two. And they are also joint leading scorers this season with Portmore, each with 24 goals. Humberland up one point to 14, joining Harborview on 14 points with Harborview with a superior goal difference. Coming up, the post-match show to talk about Arnett one, Humberland one. Red Stripe Football Mondays. Mr. One Bag Gold Medal Panmino. Red Stripe Alone Champion Boy Go. Man up for them a singing and ten to. Red Stripe. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Man, shall I make a forward boy? Red Stripe Premier League Champion Boy Sports. Every goal win a run from boy. Red Stripe Premier League Champion Boy no. The Red Stripe Premier League for champions only. The Tony Spalling Sports Complex, the venue tonight for Red Stripe Football Mondays. Arnett Gardens, the championship leaders and the title holders, held to a 1 1 draw by visiting Humberland. So, the same score these two teams had in the first round, they've come back here in the second round. Arnett Gardens, strong early in the piece here, pressing for an early strike and getting a goal in the 42nd minute. Marvin Morgan with a cross. Fishnal Harris high. Climbing above Hugh Howell with a headed effort on goal. Arnett one. Humberland nil. Three minutes before the halftime break. Humberland will respond here. The cross from Christian. McIntosh with a header from the six yard line. Jamar Hamilton, Jamar Martin unable to prevent McIntosh from coming in there. And McIntosh, a former Arnett Garns player himself, gets the goal. And look at the strike from Steve Clark from 28 yards out, crashing onto the bar. Plunkett in goal for Humberland had no clue. But unfortunate for the Arnett substitute, the post intervening there. And that's how it ended. 1-1 between Arnett Gardens and Humberland. Eight goals on tap on target. Eight goals uh, on attempted by Arnett Gardens. Three on target. Significantly fewer from Humberland. Five and one. 35 fouls in this match. 18 of them to Arnett Gardens. Two yellow cards each for each team. Just one offside call. Five corners forced by Arnett Gardens. Two for Humberland. Arnett Garns marginally more possession of the ball, 51% to 49%. But Humberland traveling from Clarendon to snatch a point here against Arnett Gardens. And it's been 
a tense battle here between these two teams that have shown consistently strong football over the past few seasons. Outstanding in defense for Arnett Gardens tonight. Jamar Martin, and he's man of the match. He's with George Davis. Thank you very much, Lance. So I'm here with Jamar Martin, our man of the match. First of all, first presentation to be made to you by Michelle Cunningham, my assistant brand manager at Red Stripe. Congratulations, your man of the match. A well played game. Congrats. Thanks again. All right, Jamar, this is your trophy. You can put the beer down or you can ask Michelle to hold for you. All right, fine. This is your trophy, your sports match trophy, your man of the match. The second one you're receiving from me in short order. Tell me about the game, though. Well, the game was good, you know. Physical, you don't know. It's a team of all years on foot. Humble and challenging team, you get me? Yeah. Just focus and come out and know, say, if you know, we know, forget our points, you get me? Uh, how important is it to continue the unbeaten streak? Well, I work upon it, you know, because we're physical, you know. Coach, so we don't reach now yet, but we're physical and we are work at it same way. Thanks again, you get me? Yeah. All right, Jamar, all the best to you, thank you. Yeah, reach, real, real, real jungle again. Big up, right. big up jungle. <laughs> Jamar Martin there, our man of the match. So we're going to speak now with the uh, losing coach. Well, not losing coach. He's not losing coach. He's the man who got a point here, Meron Gordon. Meron, we were remarking in commentary that the team seemed a bit low to start the second half. But then you made three substitutions, and all three substitutes combined on the equalizing goal. You looked like a genius. Um, yes, uh, such as football. <laughs> sometimes you make some changes. It works for you. Sometimes it don't work. But um, you know, the guys really put in a hard shift, you know. You know, those players, you know, were kind of losing them legs because, you know, this army team, they were, they were coming at us, you know, and I, I decided that we need to go for it. And, you know, with a little bit of luck, you probably could have got, got, even win the game. Yeah. After you equalised, were your instructions to the team continue pressing for the go-ahead goal or to keep what they had? Um, half and half, you know, we wanted to, to, to manage the game well because at least we want to leave here with something. But I have three very experienced strikers up front and, you know, at any time, you know, we could have gotten a break and, and score a goal. Um, we got two breaks, you know, but in the, in the last, we just didn't capitalise. How do you ensure that the good qualities that were on display this evening are replicated for the rest of this round at least? Um, let's keep the team com compact, keep the team um, disciplined and, and, and competitive. You know, that is very important, you know, to, you shouldn't have a player too comfortable in the park, you know, so just doing that. Can you tell Humble Lion fans finally, Meron, that the Lions from Clarendon are back? Yes, man. Um, since Montego Bay game, you know, I said uh, we turned the corner, you know, um, we stopped the bleeding. And I, I told you today that we are going to start the healing, you know. So we have a game at home Sunday. So we just go, we, we, that, that is definitely a three points for us. Well played. Thank you, sir. All right. So Meron Gordon there, the humble land coach, he took something from the game. Jerome, wait, I, I must ask you, are you a disappointed man with the end result? Yeah, you must be disappointed. But, you know, today the game was very, very much physical. And um, it played into humble land favor in that sense. But, you you know, it was good to know that we get a goal in the first half and after that the attacking team start to you know lose the focus and stop playing the game collectively to, 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 to go in the final third um, not to single out any individual name but you know it's a team effort in which we fall today in terms of your defense though we've, we've been talking about your defensive record we were speaking about it on commentary your three central defenders how do you think they handled the various uh, problems that Humberland posed for them this evening well they, they handled themselves well uh, McIntosh surprised me you know that defender who was given the assignment to, to continue he, he he left him at that moment and you know McIntosh executed but overall I think they have been doing a good job and so at the end of 90 minutes, based on what you saw from your team collectively and the quality of the opposition, uh, you're not feeling too sad about leaving here only with a point? No, well, it's my home game and, you know, one of the objectives is, is to win the home games. But despite of that, is the other thing is to stay unbeaten, in which we, are, we have our unbeaten, you know, still intact. Well played, Jerome. Thank you very much. All right, cool. Jerome Wade there, the coach of Arnett Gardens, leaving here with only a point. Lance, Jerome Wade says the objective is to win all the home games, but failing that, he'll take a point. He said on balance, uh, he's somewhat disappointed, but on balance, given what Humberland threw at them, he's not too disappointed with a point. Well, I guess you could, if you, if you, if you want to digest what Jerome Wade says, you, you could. But I think from an Arnett Garden standpoint, the fans would have to be disappointed that they went into the halftime break with an advantage and didn't press home that advantage in the second half because Arnett Garns played inferior in the second half to how they played in the first half. So you've got to feel that they probably took their, their feet off the gas a bit 
and, and could have won this game tonight. The last time we were here at Arnett Gardens, it was Steve Clark who came on making Jerome Waite look like a genius. But then the substitutes, Christian, McIntosh and Williams, all combined for the humble and equalizer and made Miron Gordon look like the smartest man in the stadium. Yeah, well, Arnett Gardens um, were, were floundering in the second half, but at the same time, uh, Humble Lion weren't doing anything to, to get back into this, the game until the injection of the substitutes by Meron Gordon. Um, Hugh Howell worked really, really hard tonight to try to get uh, the team back into the game. So in the end, I would say Huber, uh, uh, that Humble Lion worked hard for a point here, but overall, Arnett would have been disappointed that they failed to hold the lead they had. Yes, indeed. All right. So action coming up. We're done here at the Tony Spalding Sports Complex. Action coming up in midweek in the Red Stripe Premier League. I was about to say the UEFA Champions League. That action is on Wednesday. But Montego Bay United and Reno, that's where we're coming from for our next edition of Red Stripe Football Mondays. Next Monday, 9 p.m. ECT, live on Sportsmax 2. So that's what we, that's all she wrote from yeah. the Tony Spalding Sports Complex. An exciting game, Lance. Humble and came here, and as you predicted, they were good enough to leave with something. Yeah, didn't, didn't go here, didn't leave here with a, a defeat. So Arnett Garns moving two points clear now at the top of the table with this draw and moving their unbeaten record for the season to 13 matches. So Arnett Garns doing well. And uh, don't forget to join us next week, Monday night. Red Stripe Football Mondays coming from Montego Bay with the former champions. Well, a clash of former champions because it's Montego Bay United against Reno. Champion boy go, pan a poor dem a sing it and ten jump. Red stripe, watcha watcha watcha. Ban shell me the forward boy. Red stripe Premier League champion boy score. Every goal when I run from boy. Red stripe Premier League champion boy now. Back down we run the marathon boy. The bush and never made it at the champion boy pan. Now nah, man I don't a songsters boy. Red stripe Premier League champion boy. Yeah yeah.